St. John chapter 15. St. John chapter 15. And then we delve into scripture. You know, I am the true God. 
And, and my father is the husband and the guard. He's the one that owns the big dog. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the true vine, and my father is the one that owns the big dog. And that would have that captured their attention. That would have captured their attention. And, and, and he starts out in that general sense. And he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Are we? Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. So we are in here in St. John chapter 15 and verse number 2. So it says here, uh, every branch in me that what? Beareth not fruit, uh -huh. he taketh away. He taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, uh -huh. that it may bring forth more fruit. So he said, any branch that, that's in me. So he's literally talking about uh, Christians. Because they're in me. Non Christians are not in me. Right? So he said, he said uh, uh, any branch that is in me that stops producing, amen, stops bearing fruit. And we can go to Galatians. Uh, chapter number 5, verse 21, and uh, talk about the fruit of the Spirit. That's, that's what he's talking about, being productive. The fruit of the Spirit, producing the fruit of the Spirit. Love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, temperance, uh, and, and the such. Amen? Amen? And he said that we ought to be producing that in our lives. And when we stop producing that, uh, then we run into a problem. Am I right? Uh, when you stop being mindful and of uh, 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 productivity, bearing fruit, uh, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's a sign of, of, of drying up. That's a sign of backsliding. Mm -hmm. That's a sign that something is amiss. Amen. The problem. Amen. So read that verse 2 again. St. John chapter 15, verse number 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Now look, he says, every branch that has been in me, because he said it's in me. He's talking about Christians. He's not talking about the world. Uh, people outside of the body of Christ, the ecclesia. He's talking about those that have been connected to him. And somewhere down the road, the relationship changed. And the individual stopped bearing forth fruit. Uh, he said, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he does what? Taketh away. He taketh away. And read. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. Uh-huh. That it may bring forth more fruit. So he says now, that every branch that's in me, that, that bears fruit, that, that is producing here the fruit of the Spirit, every branch that is in me that is producing the fruit of the Spirit, he said he purges it. Now that word that purges, it, it's kind of a play on word. It, it literally, literally means, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move down to the, to, the, uh, to the meat of the Scripture where I want to be, so I'll just give you the answer. It's talking about uh, cleansing. Amen. Every, every one that is in Christ is cleansed. Amen. Purged. Cleansed. I know we talk about pruning and, and cutting off dead things and stuff like that. But what he's really after is that people that are connected with Christ, they, they get clean. Uh, they, they are cleansed uh, in a moral way. They get cleansed. Uh, in their spirit, in their soul, in their body. When anybody walks with Christ, they begin, they're, 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 the scripture says, if anyone that be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. Uh, a new creation. A new way of thinking. Uh, a new way of acting toward, toward things that are in their life. Say so they're a new creature. All old things have what? Passed away. What's that old thing? That old uh, have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. A new and living way. Amen? And, and walking with Christ, your life gets cleaner. <laughs> uh, he's a strong detergent. Uh, strong in Clorox. <laughs> uh, clean. Clean. Uh, thank you, Lord. Clean me. I, I love what David said. 
It's quick and it's powerful. It's sharp than any two-edged sword. Piercing even the divine and the center of what? The soul and the spirit. The word gets into your soul and your spirit. And he said it's a, it's a discerner of the thoughts and what? Uh-huh. 
except it abide in the vine. All right. So he said, uh, read that verse again. Abide in me, uh -huh. and I in you. Yeah. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. So he said, dwell in me, and I will dwell in you. Live in me, and I will live in you. Right? Then he said, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot what? Bear fruit of itself. So it's saying that it's impossible then for a Christian to be productive without pride. We need Jesus. Yes. Amen.
Abide in me. Abide in me. And I in you. And I in you. Remain in me. Uh, and I'll remain in you. Read. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Now, you cannot be productive in your Christian walk without being connected to Christ. You know, the Lord showed me uh, some years ago, I think when I was teaching a Bible study, and he let me know that there's, when the scripture talks about stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, right. uh, some people take that to mean, Jesus. well, do nothing. <laughs> That's not what that scripture is saying. That means do nothing. Because if you do nothing, you're going to get weak. Yes. Uh, yeah. The enemy's going to overtake you. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Lord let you know that either you're growing uh, or you're, 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 you're not growing. Uh, you're either you're growing or you're not growing. Amen. There's no, there's, when that scripture says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, yeah. you, that, that you got to continue to pray, fast, seek God, wait, stay in position to hear His voice so that you'll be strong enough to move out when He says to move out. Uh, to do whatever He tells you to do. Uh, but if you're just standing still and doing nothing, you're getting weak. Uh, the enemy is, is overtaking you. Uh, if you don't Here he said he shall bring forth what? Much 
For I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. For without me, ye can do nothing. So now he's being more specific. Let them know that, that if you're going to remain in me, if you're going to abide in me, you're going to bring forth fruit. But here he's also saying that without me, you can do what? Nothing. Nothing. It's impossible. Amen? So, so the only way to be productive in Christ is to abide in Him. Yes. I cannot be productive without abiding in Him. Am I right? My sister? Isn't there a scripture that says it's not in a man to devise his own ways? Mm -hmm. so, that, so that lets us know that we can't do anything without the Lord. Nothing. Nothing. But with him, you can what? Do all do things. All things. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, read. Verse 6. Uh -huh. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. All right. So now, let's look at the first, uh, I, I'm going to call it, first truth, if you allow me to say it, that, that fruitfulness is only achieved by being connected to Jesus. Yes. Can we agree with that? Yes. And, 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 and it's not based on human achievement. No. Right. No. <laughs> Thank you. I believe that the King Nebuchadnezzar, he got into trouble, uh, was struck down. Mm -hmm. We have he built the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And he turned around and said, look at my hands now. Mm -hmm. You know, he got, he got, he got into trouble. That's right. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All the glory and honor goes to who? God. Uh, to God. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. And then the second truth that the path of, of faithful service then it, it, it's difficult it's difficult when you when you seem to be faithful to God you're going to come across opposition yes. Yes. you're going to come across trouble yes. you're going to come across people that hate you yes. Yes. Uh, because they hate uh, and Jesus was preparing his disciples for that. So he was telling them, even though these things will occur, be faithful uh, to me. Trust me. Abide in me. Remain in me. Don't give up. Uh, don't run on the top. If he abide in me, 
and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, now here Jesus is saying, he said, he's giving them a promise. Giving them a promise. He said, if you abide in me, uh, keep my command. You, you, you dwell in me, hold my truth. You abide in me, my words abide in you. And that word words there, he's referring to his teaching. His doctrine. Uh, you've got to know the doctrine of Christ. You've got to know the teaching of Christ. And I'm going to tell you where you can start out. Start out, if you want to know the doctrine of Christ, start out in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Uh, start out with Matthew 5, 7, and Matthew 5. Now, I'm going to be wrong, but I don't know Matthew 5. I'm going to be Matthew 5, 6, and 7. That's the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Uh, you, get, you get that doctrine in you. You'll be able then to bring forth much fruit. You'll abide in his teaching. And what he has said, in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, he covers a span of, of Christian living. Situations that will come up
of Jesus. It's important. My God, it's important. Now, look at what we have. What verse is it? Verse 8. All right? Now, look what we said. Holy God. Here we go. Oh, Lord, we're going to have to stop it. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, all right. All right? If you abide in me. All right, now look. He said, if you abide in me. And my words abide in you. My, my doctrine, my teachings, if it uh, lives within you. You shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. Now, now this is, this is a, a, another promise. He said that you, if you do this, then you, whatever you ask for, you'll have it. Amen? So he preaches about uh, uh, prayer. Amen? Amen? Prayer. My word abides in you. Then whatever you pray for, uh, in my name, right. you shall have. Amen. Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Is that a great promise? Yes, yes, sir. Is that a powerful promise? Yes, yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go over real quick to, to St. John uh, chapter 14. Chapter 14 and verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name. And no, he said, whatever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That will I do. You'll perform it. But you've got to ask it according to his will. Uh, <coughs> not by in him. Read. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. So that the Father can be glorified in me. He'll do it. He'll perform it. Read. If you shall ask anything in my name, uh -huh. I will do it. He said, I will what? Do it. He'll do it. So if I ask you for more grace, will he do it? Amen. If I ask you for more mercy, will he do it? If I ask you for more in increasing love, will he do it? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so I gotta worry or, or, or stress about whether or not uh, uh, the will of God is going to be done in my life. Because I I know that it's his will that uh, uh, his will be done in me. Yes. Am I right? Amen. Amen. When you have a, a desire to do what's right, 
Amen. That desire to live for Him. Amen. Amen. God is going to help you. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. God is going to be with you. Yes. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. Why? Because you're the righteousness of God. Yes. By faith. Yes. Amen. Amen.
remember the sower and the seed? Yes. The sower and the seed? Some fell on good ground, some fell on stony ground, yes. some fell on the corn, yes. and then some fell on what? Good ground. Yes. And that seed, that bird that fell on good ground, it produced. Yes. It brought an outside fruit, uh, my mind went to, in other words, we have to bear fruit for other people, for others. Right. All right. Because our life have to be so clear and so desirable that when, that people can see the fruit in our life. So we're bearing fruit for other people. When they see that fruit in our life is so desirable that they want what we have. If we have an abundant amount of love and show that love, mm -hmm. you know, people are going to see it and they want to, they say, well, I want to be like that. Right. So is that like bearing other fruit or more fruit of fruit for others? Absolutely. He said, uh, let your light shine before men mm -hmm. that they may see your good works and do what? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. so, so we deal uh, as Christians. Uh, uh, from the world now, we deal with a fallen world. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, uh, we have to go to them to show them Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, what is Christ? Long suffering, love, patience, joy, you know, and, and, and redemption. You thought all the above. And and when we when we show them that, then they say, Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, be witnesses. Uh, and then, and then with each other, we all have shortcomings. We all have. 
Sister Louise was saying, uh, the apple tree doesn't grow the fruit for itself. Uh -uh. It grows it for people, for us, yes. to come along and pick it and eat it. Yes. So yes, it's to help others. Our fruit that we're bearing is always to help others. Yep. Those in the church. So every every true tree out there is growing fruit, but the tree doesn't it doesn't profit from the fruit. Uh, we do. Thank you. So people profit from our lives. Absolutely. You are the salt. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm a salt. I'm a salt. Yeah. Uh, when I walk into a, uh, uh, a place, I realize I'm a salt. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I, I got great influence. Yeah. Uh, when you when you go somewhere, realize you got great influence. Right. Amen. As long as you are abiding in Christ and His Word is abiding in you, mm -hmm. you got great influence. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And you can influence others to turn from darkness to light, yes. from the power of Satan to God. Amen. Amen. To lead them to repentance. Amen. All right? Amen. Uh, so God can be glorified. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's all we want. God can be glorified. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Lord, help us. Help us. Thank you, Lord. Help us. Thank you. So that's why Jesus is so focused. The productivity of the life. Yes. Amen. And, and, and the only way to bear good fruit, you've got to abide with him. Yeah. You've got to remain with him. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to keep your relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. This is good. This is good Bible study. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes, Let a man examine himself. Yes. <laughs> Yes. To see where he's dissipated. Yes. Yes. Those, those Corinthians that Paul sent them to, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they were having a feast uh, during, during fasting time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they were uh, allowing the poor brother to go without food while they fed sufferers. Uh, uh, we all have to do that. We all have to shame our brother. No. Amen. Amen. Uh, so that's why I said, nothing.
my Father glorified. By this, my Father glorified. That you bear much fruit. Now, God is glorified when you bring forth much fruit. Productivity. Fruit of the Spirit. This is what he's talking about here. The fruit of the Spirit. Read it. So shall ye be, my disciples. Now, 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 the product of being Jesus' disciple is bringing forth fruit. Amen? And that's all the same. My fruit proves that I'm his disciple. If I'm a disciple, I bring forth fruit. Yes. Am I right? Yes, sir. What does a disciple do? They have others become disciples. Especially, 
if it's home, because sometimes we get too comfortable with family, right? right. <laughs> but we still got to love them even when it's not good. Yes. It's not right. Well, it's not easy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's why you got to bear fruit. That's why you got to fruit of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 That's so easy. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We can't do critical. Yeah. 
general um, question, generally pointing at me, but just general. Uh, when, um, when you know that there is some um, strife between you and another individual, is it wise to just kind of separate from that person until your heart is fixed and your heart is right? <coughs> Continue to, to be in that person. Yes and no. Mm. Yes and no. Um, when, when, when the sting first hits, you know, get yourself together. That's Monday. Tuesday, go to the interview. Go to the interview tomorrow, Tuesday. Because uh, you don't want to wait till Friday or next month, next year, mm. right. because you're giving room and space to the devil. All right. Yes. All right. Okay. yes. In other words, when you get hit, get yourself together, go to the person right away. Yes. Straight Amen. 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 <coughs> because the enemy, he's shrewd. Right. Mm -hmm. He can test you in the end. Before you know it, you call up 20 or 30 other people telling them what happened. Uh, and now you're infected 20 or 30 other people. Right. Right. Yes. Right. It's good, eh? Yes, it is. Yes. Good question. Good question. Good question. But Bishop, don't the scriptures give us instruction on how to handle a situation like that? Absolutely. 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 You think? What do you want to do? going to say, Bishop, you know, uh, when Jesus said he loved us, he didn't just keep saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. He put it into action. He died. Right. So we can he pray. Died. We can pray and pray and pray and ask God to give us this and that and the other. In order for us to know that we have the victory, we got to act on that thing. We got to put it into action. So you can pray for love. And while you're praying for love, God will show you what you need to do. He will show you what you need to do. And if you don't act on it, you'll never get the victory. You'll never know whether you have the victory or not. When God speaks to you, when you're asking him for something, and he tell you what to do and how to go about it, you're supposed to, you should do that. And that way you know, you know, you're working in the spirit. You're, you're working according to the will of God. The, the word is actually coming into action when you act on it. I was praying for a situation uh, for a while. And, and one time I went to prayer for it, the Lord said, didn't I tell you what to do? All right. So, so when I, when we do what God tells us to Come do, on now. we get delivered. Come on. Yes. Yes. We're actually participating mm -hmm. in it. Right. And then I can't, I can't have a talk with my brother or my sister and pray away. Come on now. You can't do that. That's not, that's not scripture. Mm -hmm. no. uh, you got to go to them. Come on. Yes. Come on. <laughs> Am I right? All right. Amen. 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 That's also affecting your walk with the Lord. Oh, yeah. You're free. Because, yeah, you're free. Yeah. And, um, you don't want to get out of God's will. No. Because if you stay out, you know, if you stay in that, in that predicament too long, it's going to get you out of God's will. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah, it's going to get you out of God's will, and you know, you don't, you don't want to stay in that state. It's called, it's called the bitter root. Yeah. Uh, it'll spring up, yeah. and then that, 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 that lack of love will turn into hatred, right. That's where right. then many are just the right. That's right. Wow. Okay. Oh, wait, my brother did my brother. I was just going to say, in that. 
instruction that he has given us in his word that if it can't be reconciled between the two, yeah. then there's another step that they have to go to. Right. You know, they have to go to the pastor if they can't reconcile their love for one another. Well, it didn't say the pastor. It, it says the congregation. Bring, well, it says bring in a couple of witnesses. Yeah, witnesses. Yeah. You know, then uh, if it doesn't settle then, then bring it before the congregation. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. But you know, there's certain things that the Bible yeah. says shouldn't even be named among us. Yeah. You know, if we got if we're professing God, right. yeah. then God is love. He's love. God is love, so if I got God on the inside, I should have some love. Amen. Well, let me hit you then. We got to move on because the time is almost out. Go ahead. I just wanted to say, Bishop, you said you can't pray that on a way. No. Can you do it? Jesus said, Bye. He said, <laughs> right. He said to leave your gift at the altar and then go back. You can't even pray. Your prayers are hidden. Come on Bye. now. That's scripture. You're wasting time if you don't get these in prayer. Come on. Bye. That's scripture. That's it. You gotta get up and go fix it. That's why. That's why I couldn't pray away. That's why we can't pray away. That's right. Go be reconciled. That's yes. it. Mm -hmm. huh? the Lord showed me. Be reconciled. Because oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. A couple of years back, a pastor in the city I was from. Every time I saw this pastor, it was always you could feel this tension. Yeah. I didn't know nothing I had done to this pastor. Uh -huh. Right. But there was always something there. I could never reach this person. And find out what's wrong. And finally the Lord led me to sit down write a letter. I wrote the letter and mailed it to their church. And in that letter I told them, I'm coming to you based on this scripture. I don't know what the problem is between us, but I don't have nothing but love for you. Yeah. And behind that, I, I gained that pastor. I gained that. I was reconciled to my sister. And I saw them at the unity meeting Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saw me and ran and grabbed me and gave me the biggest up. Man, I love you. I, it's so good to see you out. But because of what I did, I followed the word. Yeah. And I gained that sister back. I, I, I saw the whole direction. I, I sat there and marveled. I did. Yeah. I marveled. Uh -huh. I said, look at the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is real. Yes, it is. Yeah, it wasn't always yes, it like is. that. We didn't speak to each other for a long time. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. yeah. I'm right, I'm right. Then we got to move on. We was taught not to go to sleep, but don't go to sleep, folks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that's that grass. That's that grass. When we say don't go to sleep, over, that means that if I know that I have an arm against them. But they say no, that's that grass. Don't run up here to the altar and think I'm going to pray over it because my prayer ain't going nowhere. I need to get up and go settle it with my brother. Then I can come. Then. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Where we at? 13 and 2, unless you want to read one again. All right, let's start, let's start with 13. B, come on, Jesus is talking about. He said, the thought that was coming in my mind is. Jesus said, I want you to love uh, me like I love you. Mm -hmm. So here is a great example of how Jesus loved us. I mean, you want me to read one again? Yeah, read one again. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, uh -huh. that he should depart out of this world yeah. unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Now we've got to love people unto the end. Never give up. Amen. Amen. Never give up. Am I right? All right, read. And, and supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Mm -hmm. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand. And that he was come from God and went to God. Now you gotta know that you're in God. Yes. Amen. That you come from God. That you got a relationship with God. Is that good to know? Yes. yes. Amen. If you repent and believe on him, you got a relationship with him. Yes. I agree. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. Uh-huh. 
After that, he poured water into a basin yeah. and began to wash the disciples' feet uh -huh. and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Okay. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, uh -huh. dost thou wash my feet? Yeah. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, mm -hmm. but thou shalt know hereafter. Yeah. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Mm. Now, now look, what was Jesus showing Peter and the rest of the disciples? Humility. Humility. Toward whom? Each other. Each other. Washing your feet was the lowest job possible. Yes. Uh, to where Peter took offense. Not that, not that, uh, he was saying, Jesus, you're unworthy to wash my feet, but Jesus, you're too great to wash my feet. <coughs> uh, but Jesus was showing us an example that we should serve one another even in our lowest. Wow. Help one another. Love one another. That's love. And love is sacrificial. We got the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Messiah, the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. Watch it. Holy God, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm not like to humble myself. Yeah, Lord. Uh, uh, and watch the Lord's feet. The hell is the Lord out there? To strip them down? To show them up? Yes. Am I right? I read. Verse 9. Huh? Simon Peter said unto them, Lord, Lord, not my feet only, uh, but also my hands and my head. Now, when Peter realized that yes. Jesus would have nothing to do with him, he backed up. <laughs> uh, he said, oh, Lord, watch me everywhere. Yeah. Uh, that's the way we ought to be. When, when, when it comes time to realize that uh, whatever uh, I'm, I'm struggling with, whatever But to clean, but is clean every whit. Every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. Uh -huh. Read. For he knew who should betray him. Uh -huh. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Mm. Ye call me Master and Lord. Yes. And ye say, Well. For so I am. Yeah. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, mm -hmm. ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Are we all to do that? Are we all to serve one another? Yes. Isn't that love? Yes. That's love. Yes. That's love. Sacrifice. Read. What verse you? 15. All right. For I have given you an example uh -huh. that ye should do as I have done to you. There it is. That when he said, uh, to uh, tell the disciples about the love that he would show them, he demonstrated. Amen. Sacrifice. Read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, mm -hmm. neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Mm -hmm. What verse? Seven, no, 16. Read all the way to 20. Oh. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Yes. 